Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and in the last video, we added a search bar to our app, but when we actually type in it, it's not really doing anything to our data. So in this video, we're gonna add some filtering so that when we type in a certain coin name or symbol, uh, those coins actually come up first on our search results. All right, welcome back everyone. In the last video, we set up our search bar. So we got our search bar looking good and it's in our app on our home screen. But when we type, if I search for maybe Ethereum, nothing actually happens. This list doesn't filter. So the first thing we're gonna do is add filtering so that we can actually search for whatever we're typing here. And obviously the code for this is gonna be done within the view model. So our view model already has a reference to the text for this search and it has a reference to the data for this list. So it makes the most sense to just put it into the view model as well. So I'm gonna jump into our home view model here and we're gonna use a little bit of combine magic here and use some subscribers. So if you follow my Swift UI continued learning playlist, I did cover how to use subscribers with text fields in MVVM. And we're gonna basically do that here. So right now the <clears throat> the text in the search bar is connected, it's binded to this published variable here, this search text in our view model. And this search text is a published variable. So every time this search text gets updated, so every single time I type any letter into this search text, this string is gonna get updated to that value. And because it is a publisher, it's then going to publish values. So anything subscribed to this publisher would then receive that new value. So in our add subscribers function, we're going to actually add a new subscriber here. And I'm going to subscribe to the search text with the money sign search text. And as I'm typing that, we can actually see that it is a publisher, right? We can see it's a publisher of type string. And then when we're subscribed, we can then call dot sync just like we call above here and we can receive a value. And so right now this search text is of type string. So um, every time we change the text, this search text gets updated. It's a publisher. It's going to publish values. We're subscribing to that publisher. And every time this gets updated, this function here is going to receive that updated value. And that's what this string is here. It's the updated published value. And what we're going to want to do is actually filter it with the coins list, right? So although we have the text that we're typing in, we still need a reference to the coins list so that we can filter through the list. So in this sync, we could click return. This would be our returned text. And we can access uh, all of those coins, all of these coins in our class here by calling self.allcoins. And this is going to reference this publisher, but we can actually make this a little bit more efficient. And so in our subscriber here, we can combine this subscriber to also be subscribed to our data service that all coins. So before we call sync here, I'm going to call dot combine, combine latest, sorry. And in here, we're going to combine it with the data service dot money sign all coins. So it's the same subscriber that we're doing right here. We're going to do down here. And now this subscriber that we're creating is subscribed to the search text and the altcoins. So anytime either of these change, this is going to get published. And when we call dot sync now, we can see that it's now going to return us two values. It's going to return us the first output and then the second output. And the first output is going to be our search text, which is a string. And our second output is going to be the money sign all coins, which is an array of uh, coin models. So now we can use both of those and do some filtering. So before we call sync, let's actually let's actually call dot map. And we're going to go to the transform here and then we're going to transform the output from these publishers into some type of data. So let's click enter. And we're getting these two outputs and we know the first output here is going to be of type string it's coming from our search text and it's going to be of type string so let's just call this text 
We'll add a comma. And then the second output we're going to get is from the all coins. And the all coins is an array of coin model. So I'm going to call this starting coins. And we want to convert the text and the starting array to a final array that we're going to use in our app. So we'll change this type to an array of coin model. All right, and now the first thing we want to do in here is when we are filtering, if the search text is a blank string, so if this text is blank or it's empty, we don't actually need to do any filtering and we can just return the starting coins. So in here, let's add a quick guard statement. We'll say not with the exclamation point, text dot is empty, else, and we'll open the brackets. So if the text is not empty, we're going to continue with the rest of this and we're going to do some filtering. But if it is empty, we're going to go into this else statement and we will just return the starting coins. Cover the case when there is no filtering needed and we can just return out our starting coins. But if we get down here, we then need to actually filter these starting coins for coins that contain this text. So first we're going to convert the text that's being typed in to lowercase text. We're going to set so we're going to say let lowercase text equals text dot lowercase. And I'm doing this because when we are filtering in Swift, it is case sensitive. So if I instead convert everything to lowercase, we can we can filter a little more effectively than having to deal with like uh, capitals and lowercase. Because if we didn't do this and a user was searching for um, Bitcoin like this, and maybe if our data had Bitcoin all lowercase, it wouldn't work. But by calling lowercase, I'm going to convert everything just to lowercase so that we can be a little more efficient in our filtering. And then here we're going to say let filtered coins equals, and we're going to call our starting coins dot filter. And I covered these filters in the Swift UI Continued Learning course as well. Um, let's click enter on this filter. And this is going to be for each coin. And we need some logic here on which coins we want to return from this array. So we're going to return uh, the coin dot name and we'll convert it to lowercase dot lowercase. If the coin dot name dot lowercase dot contains our lowercase text. So if the coin name contains our text, we want to return that coin. So that would then be true. And we're going to say or with the two lines. Um, I think this is called maybe a pipe. Someone commented that in one of my videos. But um, so we're going to use we're going to check if the name contains it. But let's also check if the coin dot symbol dot lowercase dot contains lowercase text. Or let's check the coin dot ID dot lowercase dot contains lowercase text. So the users don't really realize this, but we're going to actually filter. And when someone types in some letters, we're going to actually see if those letters are included in the name, the symbol and the ID. So users will so users will be able to search for any of these and they should get the results. All we need to do is return the coin model so we can down here then return the filtered coins. And we can actually make this a little bit shorter instead of even creating this filtered coins variable here. Let's just up here, we will return the starting coins that filter and I'll get rid of this down here. All right, so if we do map this successfully, it's going to return us our filtered array of coin model. All we now need to do is put that into our all coins up here. So let's call dot sync. And we're not going to worry about the errors, so I'm not going to use the receive completion. I'm just going to use the receive value here. Click enter. Press enter on this. And this is going to be the returned coins. Let's make this a weak reference, so weak self. And then finally, just like we do up here, we're going to set self dot all coins and we'll set it equal to our returned coins. The last thing we need to do is store this publisher somewhere. So we will call dot store in cancelables. And this should work. And I want to point out here that originally when we are downloading our data, we were subscribing to the data service that all coins and then throwing that result the return coins straight into our all coins. 
But in this new function that we created, we are subscribing to the search text as well as the altcoins. So when the altcoins gets published, this is also going to run. And then it's going to update our local variable of altcoins. So because it's doing this here, we actually no longer need this first publisher up here. So I'm going to delete this publisher entirely. And we're going to combine these two together just to be a little bit more efficient and professional in our coding in this app. Put a comment here that this function uh, updates all coins, which is the variable up here. All right, I'm going to click run on the simulator. I'm going to run this on the simulator quick. And hopefully when we start typing, uh, we can now get some filtering going. So I'm going to type in uh, ETH for Ethereum here, E-T-H. And automatically we have this filtering and I hope it's working for you as well. Um, uh, anything that has the ETH in the name or the coin symbol should be coming up here. Um, we don't have the names, so it's hard to tell, but like this one is called Tether, which includes an ETH in that name even though it's not in the symbol here. But it looks like our filtering is actually working. Let's do Bitcoin. And now we have all of the coins that have the word Bitcoin in them. And our filtering is working perfectly. All right, and before we move forward, let's clean this up a little bit because um, I know this is actually not that much code, but I like to keep the add subscribers function as short and readable as possible. So I'm gonna take the code in this map and make it its own function. So down here, let's go outside of this function. Let's create a, a private func. Let's call this filter coins. Open close parentheses, open the brackets. This function needs to accept uh, the text here, which is a string and the starting coins, which is an array of coin model. So we'll add text of type string and coins of type array of coin model. And it's going to return just like up here, an array of coin model. So return array of coin model. I am going to copy this code here, paste it down here. And actually we rename this coins, not starting coins. So let's just make this coins. Let's make this coins here. All the code is still, all the logic is still the same except we extracted this function from our subscriber. And it is now reusable if we want to add it on another subscriber as well, although we are not going to. So up here, let's just call it dot map. And then in this function, I'm going to call filter coins. And the inputs are the exact same as the inputs that we would be getting here. So I can actually just delete the parameters of this filtered coins. And I'm going to delete our second map here, our original map. And just like that, it should turn green. <clears throat> should do green if it works. Let's run it to make sure we are still working. Working. Let's type something. Um, ADA. And our filter still works. So you guys can see now just like how nice, short, and condensed our subscriber logic is. Like this, this is like magic, honestly, in our app. We're subscribing to the search text. We're subscribing to the coins in our data service. Anytime either of these change, we're going to map those coins and we're going to update our filter. And then we're going to get those filtered coins and update our, our array, which is being shown on the screen. So this is magic right here. The last thing I want to touch on before we end this video is when you're dealing with text fields in your app, oftentimes users are going to type really quickly. So like right now I can't really type quick, but if someone was texting here and had like a long word, they would type a bunch of letters really fast. And every single time these letters are typed, we are getting a published value to the search text. So if I type 10 letters really quickly here, this whole function, all this code and this filtered coins is going to run 10 times really quickly behind the scenes. So it's not that bad because um, like this is not some crazy logic. This is not going to a database or anything. This is um, pretty simple filtering. But to make this a little more efficient, we can add a debounce onto this subscriber. So after this combine latest, we'll call dot debounce. I'm going to use the for and schedule and we'll say dot seconds and I'm going to debounce for 0.5 seconds. 
And on the any schedule, I'm gonna make sure it's on the main queue. So we'll call dispatch queue dot main. All right, and I cover the debounce also in the Swift UI continue learning playlist, but essentially this debounce will wait 0.5 seconds before running the rest of this code. And it's waiting to see if we get another published value. So if I type two letters really quickly in here, like within 0.5 seconds, this is gonna publish twice, but this debouncer is going to basically manage both of those. And it's only going to run the rest of the function after nothing new has been published for 0.5 seconds. So if I run the app one more time, and if I type really quickly here, you're gonna see that it's not going to filter until it stops receiving values for 0.5 seconds. So I'm gonna start typing really quickly, nothing's happening, and once I stop for 0.5 seconds, it will then do the filter. And it's a slight delay after typing, so I'll do like Bitcoin, and then it will be 0.5 seconds, but that's actually going to make our app much more efficient and we're not going to have to run this code a thousand times every time someone touches every time someone types a letter really quickly our app is now really coming together there's still a lot more to do though so i hope you are excited and i hope you guys are learning through this process um, because this adding subscribers and then subscribing to all the changes in our app this is so incredibly powerful and if you can understand this if you're able to implement this on your own, you are so far ahead of the game because this is the future of iOS development. This is so incredibly powerful. I cannot stress it enough. And we're gonna actually expand on this in the coming videos. So if you're a little confused, maybe it's a great time to review what we've learned, but if not, let's keep moving forward. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.